A Rito Rust injection system consists of a metering pump and a feeder tank. There are two basic types of metering pumps, a diaphragm type and a peristaltic type, and there are four feed tank sizes that are available. Installing the diaphragm pump injection system. This is a diaphragm type metering pump. It operates with a solenoid driven diaphragm that moves water through the pump head. It has a discharge side of the pump head and a suction side. It operates with a clicking thumping noise, so it is not recommended for installation in a house where it can be easily heard. It is a totally enclosed unit, so it is fine for outdoors installation. To install an injection system, you start by drilling a hole in the lid for the suction line. There is a preset mark for this on the lid. To locate the mark, refer to the diagram that comes with the pump. Now mount the pump following the instructions provided with the kit. Position the pump on the lid and cut the tubing to the length necessary to secure it to the suction side of the pump head and reach within about one inch of the bottom of the feed tank with a ceramic weight attached. Next, run the black poly tubing that comes with the pump kit through the hole and then attach it to the pump. The tube is secured to the nipple on the suction valve with an O-ring and compression nut. This becomes the suction line. The remaining black tubing becomes the discharge line. You can run as much as 75 feet from the discharge side of the pump to the injection point in the irrigation line. However, only 20 feet is provided with the pump kit, so if you need more, you will have to order it. To attach the discharge line, begin by removing the red cap on the discharge fitting on the pump head. Be sure not to dislodge or remove the ball check valve inside the fitting. If it is dislodged, note that the ball check valve is inserted with a smaller orifice down. You can also blow through it to determine the proper orientation. Screw the three-way valve into the fitting. The discharge line is attached to the nipple on the top of the three-way valve with an O-ring and compression nut. The remaining piece of clear tubing that comes with the pump kit is called a priming line or a pressure relief return line. One end is inserted into the opening on the side of the three-way valve. The other end can be fed back into the tank or left to hang free. At the other end of the discharge line is the injection check valve. The injection check valve has a ball, sleeve, and spring mechanism. It's important that these be kept in the proper sequence. The injection check valve is teed into the irrigation line between the backflow preventer in the irrigation line and the first solenoid valve. It is key that the valve be installed so that it is on the underside of the irrigation pipe with an angle no less than 45 degrees. This is so that gravity works to assist the valve's one-way flow function. The valve should be positioned so that the injection point is in the middle of the pipe. The valve has both half-inch and quarter-inch threads to help accomplish this positioning with reducing bushings. Use Teflon tape to seal pipe threads. Powering up the metering pump can be accomplished in two ways. In both cases, a relay is used. We have already shown the first method of connecting up to the metering pump through the timer. This was shown using the peristaltic pump. The second method of connecting up the metering pump is through the pump start relay for the well pump. This second method is used if the well pump is used for irrigation only and there is no pressure tank. To accomplish this, cut the pigtail off the pump power cord and splice it to the relay. Each time the well pump turns on, the metering pump will also turn on. You must match the metering pump voltage to the power source voltage. Failure to do so can result in a power surge that blows the pump. The warranty does not cover a blown pump. Remember to turn off the power when doing your wiring. This second method of powering up the metering pump can, of course, also be done with a peristaltic pump. To see if the metering pump is operating properly, use the return line. This is the clear plastic line that is attached to the three-way valve on the discharge side of the pump head. The three-way valve enables you to pump solution through the clear tubing initially, 
and confirm that the pump is operating without unscrewing the injection check valve from its fitting. Turn the knob on the three-way valve one quarter of a turn and wait for water to appear at the end of the clear return line tubing. Now turn the three-way valve a complete turn until you feel a click. Now the water in the pump head will go up through the discharge line towards the injection check valve. There are a few more things you should know about a metering pump. The pump has a plate on it that provides information about voltage, amperage, and feed rate. 10 GPD means the maximum amount of solution the pump can deliver is 10 gallons per day if it pumped all day long. 42 GPH means the maximum is 0.42 gallons per hour, which is the same as 10 gallons per day. The knob on the back of the pump allows you to adjust the feed rate or stroke of the metering pump. The diaphragm pump can be adjusted from 30% of maximum feed rate to 100%. As you turn towards 100%, you can hear and feel the stroke increasing. A 10 GPD pump set at 100% is pumping at a 10 GPD rate. At a 50% setting, it is pumping at a 5 GPD rate. Riddle Rust systems have four requirements in order to achieve satisfactory results. The right feeder system for the application, proper installation of the feeder system, choice of the proper chemical, proper dosage of the chemical. We are ready to help you get the job done right. If you have questions, please call or email us.